Hey everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you how to get started with any RPG for Unity. We're going to begin on the official GitHub page, where there are already a set of instructions for how to get things running, but if you're someone like me, who maybe has a little bit of an easier time following along with somebody, then this video is for you. Before we actually get into working with Unity, there are three to four things that we need to download first to make it work. One of which being a compatible Unity version if you do not already have it, which is 2019.4.20 and 2019.4.21. Either of those is going to work for you. If you don't already have it, just go to the Unity archives, navigate to the correct year and the correct version, and then click the download option that works for your system and your setup. The next thing that we're going to want to download is the actual NERPG package for Unity, and we can find that by going to nerpg.org forward slash downloads, and you can either type that link in directly or go to nerpg.org and navigate to the correct tab and scroll down, whatever floats your boat. In any case, we're going to download the most recent package available, which is 0.10.1a, and this does take a while, so I cut it out of the video, but you can just pause while it's downloading and I will be here when you get back. The next thing that we want to download is the UMA2 asset from the Unity Asset Store, which is a free asset. It stands for Unity Multipurpose Avatar, and you can either click this direct link that's in the NERPG GitHub repo, or you can just, you know, search it up as normal from the Asset Store, add it to your assets, uh, and then we can find it easily later when we're working in Unity. The last thing we need is the Nav Mesh Components GitHub repo, which I would just recommend clicking this direct link that is in the NERPG repo to find it easily, and that'll take us directly to the 2019.3 branch, where we just need to download a zip file. And again, this takes a little while, so just pause the video and I'll be here when you're done. Now that everything's downloaded, the final step is we just got to extract these files or unzip them uh, so that they are actually usable for Unity and we can transfer them, and then open up Unity and create a new project with the correct version. Once Unity's done opening and setting up, we're going to go into the extracted NERPG file one level deep and drop that file into the assets panel. And I'm going to just speed this up so you can see exactly what it looked like for me to do it. Uh, you might think initially, oh, is Unity crashing? Is it broken? Did I not drop it? No, the file's just very large and Unity is thinking. So wait for that a couple minutes. And when it's done importing, you're gonna see an API pop up. You, you just say, no thanks, it's fine. We don't care about that. And if you look at the console, there's going to be a lot of warnings and errors, but do not panic. That is normal and we're going to fix it very shortly. So next thing we want to do is go into the NavMesh Components extracted file, navigate down to the Assets folder, and then just grab that NavMesh Components file and drop it into the panel as well. It's a lot smaller, so it's a lot faster. It shouldn't freeze up Unity like the other one does. Next, we're going to go to Window, Text Mesh Pro, import TMP essential resources, and then make sure to uncheck that font at the top because any RPG comes with a custom version of that, so we don't need it. Uh, after it's done downloading, then we're going to add that UMA2 asset that we snagged earlier. And if this is your first time using the asset, you might have to download it first before importing, but in that case, just, you know, download, import, follow the steps, everything should be dandy. After this asset is finished importing, we're going to want to check that the .NET version Unity is using is compatible. So go to project settings, player, other settings, and we're going to want to change this to .NET 4 instead of standard 2.0 if it's not already 4. And changing this, you're going to see things recompile and re-import, but they're still going to look like there's errors and warnings in the console. So what I like to do is just save everything, completely exit out of the project, and give it a clean slate coming back in. And you should see after this is loaded back up, I will check the console and there are no longer any errors or anything like that showing up. So 
So I just wanna close out this video by showing off zero configuration mode, which lets you use any RPG as this out of the box functional character controller. So if that does not interest you and you would rather just figure out any RPG totally for yourself, I respect that. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful in getting you started on that process. But if it does interest you, let me show you exactly how easy it is. First, make sure you have some sort of ground with a mesh collider on it. That's very important. Otherwise, your character is going to fall through the earth as soon as you press play. But after that, we just need to look for the game manager prefab, which we will then drag into our hierarchy. And then we need to look for the default spawn point, which like its name suggests, is just where your character is going to start out once you hit play. After you've placed this in your scene where you want, the last thing that we need to do is deactivate the main camera because any RPG has its own camera system. Uh, and then that's literally it. All you need to do is press play and you have a functioning character controller. As you can see here, you're completely able to walk, move the camera, and though I don't show it in this clip specifically, the UI is all interactable. So I encourage you to just, you know, try it out for yourself, see what you like. In any case, I hope no matter what game you're developing, this tool makes it a little bit easier to get there.